session on trade unions and work councils. We'll start firstly with trade unions. So trade unions are an external organisation that acts on behalf of its members. And in order to become a member, you will pay a fee, perhaps a monthly fee, and that will help contribute to that external organisation, being the trade union, having a headquarters or a legal team and all other costs will be covered through that fee by the members. Now, an important thing to recognise is that trade unions represent their members and only their members, only those that pay their fee. And they look to negotiate wages on behalf of them, ensure that employment terms are reasonable. They look to deal with management and come to an acceptable agreement over what an acceptable output level is or acceptable productivity level is. Now, the benefits to employees of having trade unions is that individuals, well, on their own, they have limited power when it comes to negotiating. But if they combine together by becoming members, by paying their fees, then that allows them to create collective bargaining power. So they have more negotiating power when they act together and they combine. Now, the benefits to the organisation, to the employer, well, it creates a formal communication link between management and employees, and that can be good to have a harmonious business. And additionally, it's more productive from the employer's stance than negotiating with every single employee when they instead just negotiate with one organisation that is representing the majority of the employees through the trade union. So they are it's more productive to deal with that kind of communication link as opposed to dealing with every single member. Now, it's important to understand that while it's ideal that management and trade unions get along, if they do not get along and there's a breakdown there in trust, perhaps, then it might lead to industrial action. And industrial action can come in certain forms. It could be something like um, refusing to work overtime. It could be one step up, just working the bare minimum. So employees agree they only work the bare minimum to their contract, sometimes referred to as go slow. Now, in case of both of these types of industrial action, of course, that reduces productivity. But in the most extreme example that trade unions who are representing the employees and the management don't get along in terms of agreeing perhaps these things here, then it might lead to um, the employees going on strike. And that's obviously a lose-lose situation because the employees won't get their wages and the employers will have less in terms of output or sales. So that's trade unions. Now, similar but different is work councils. Work councils are an internal committee of management and employees and they represent all employees not just the members who have paid up their fees so work councils represent all employees and they're an internal committee and they look to deal with different things to trade unions they look to deal with organizational plans for the future the visions the long-term visions of the company maybe what training is going to be put in place what the investments are going to be now one step further beyond an internal committee is that you could have worker directors now worker directors is when the employees vote in one person that will represent them on the board of directors now that's on a much higher level than in an internal committee on the board of directors and this exists in germany in some businesses and essentially that one employee will be able to vote on employee matters. So it gives them a stance, a vote within the board of directors in terms of that long-term decision making. Now the final thing to consider is that work councils are a complement to trade unions and I hope that helps and I'll see you at the next sesh.